Is gasoline flammable? You'll find out after this. Four, three, two. Hey, we made something blow up. We made something blow up. <laughs> Adam has improved his Leiden jar. The heavy duty version will provide a potent spark. And finally, they are getting an ideal blend of fuel and air. Well, I lost a lot of hair on my arm. How about that? It definitely works. Okay, now I'm afraid. Adding more gasoline won't guarantee a bigger blast. You watch yourself there, hombre. The critical mix needs more air. That's, oh, that's probably it. That's probably all that it takes. Do you think there's anything left of a fume in there? Go, go, go. OK, here I go. Let's talk more sparks. Stop your grinning and grab your linen. Here we go. Whoa! The Heinemann was right. We now know exactly what kind of concentration of fuel that we have to have for ignition. We know that we can create a spark from static electricity off of fabric, and uh, we know that it is something that we have to be very careful with. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Am I missing an eyebrow? <laughs> I am missing an eyebrow, aren't I? Yeah, you lost a lot of air up there. You're kidding me. No. You're all right. It's not okay. It won't look weird after a day or two. <laughs> I think it took him about five seconds to worry about whether he's going to look funny for his date. I have a date tomorrow. Is it survival more important or sex? Call <laughs> in the name of science. OK, that was probably one of the stupidest things I've ever done. No problem now with the static spark. The mix is right, and ignition comes easily. But what about the cell phone? Will it prove to be the cause of gas station fires? Nada. Niente. Second call. No explosion. So, Bob, have you heard of this myth regarding uh, exploding a gas station by using a cell phone? Uh, not only did I hear, but I'm quoted in the myth that says, Mr. Rinkus says, don't use cell phones. They can cause fire at the pump. Uh, that email's gone around and people take that literally because they are believing everything they see in emails, unfortunately. <laughs> After researching hundreds of gas station fires, Bob Rankes of the Petroleum Equipment Institute says cell phones are in the clear. Pure and simple, we don't have any accidents involving a cell phone at a service station. It just doesn't happen. But a dramatic fire department demonstration clearly shows what can happen when static is involved. People who re-enter the car during refueling face the biggest risk. They're typically younger people, because older people will go like this to get out of their car. And when they do that, they discharge. So they just simply pop out of the car, not touch anything, not shut the door, not ground themselves, not touch this. They'll take one two steps, they're wearing neoprene shoes, so they're not discharging, they're not dissipating on the concrete. They touch a piece of metal here, the vapors are coming out of the tank, the air is coming in from outside, so that's two parts of the fire triangle, and the third part is a source of ignition, which is the spark. The problem comes is when they overreact, they go, oh my goodness, and they leave a stream of gasoline, they already have a fire, it gets underneath the car, or they could get it on themselves. With the cell phone myth well and truly busted, they still want to make their own big static bag. So they're back at Fred Stokes Gasoline Museum with the fire department there to monitor safety. You're gonna pump the whole thing in there. It's make or break time. So today the guys are using a much higher concentration of gas in a much finer spray. Okay, that's it. All right, here we go. Watching for spark. Despite a heavy saturation of gasoline vapors, still no blast. This is a pain in the butt. You know, we got the darn thing so it's foggy with gas fumes in there, and no boom. What are you going to do? Light and jar, I am finished with you. Desperate to get their big bang, the boys decide to use extra juice. Good spark. 
That good? Yeah. We're using a, a spark that's actually a smaller spark in terms of the kilovolts, but it's longer. We're using neon transformer to generate it, but it lasts as long as we want. So I feel totally confident we're gonna get the concussive boom that we want right now. Okay, Adam, let's get ready. Come on, okay, here we go. Stand by. I feel like something's gonna happen this time. In three, two, one. <laughs> wow, I forgot to watch. That was really cool. <laughs> right on. Whew. Hey, we got it. Yeah. That was a lot of force. Yes, it was. That burst apart this 24-foot seam of uh, metal tape. Well, it's about time, huh? It's about time. Absolutely right. Don't be fooled. Gasoline vapors and a strong spark under the right conditions spell danger at the fuel pump. Bob, what is your recommendation if there is a spark, if there is ignition, what should you do? If you discharge here and you get a spark, don't be a hero, don't take your nozzle out. Your gas tank will contain the gasoline. We don't want any gasoline spilling on the forecourt or on the pavement. Stand away and notify the station immediately. Adam, what do you reckon? Myth busted? Absolutely, this myth is definitely busted. No cell phone will ever cause a gas station to ignite. Just not gonna happen. I agree.